Hello and welcome to this CodeBuddies.org live coding session. CodeBuddies is a global community of amazing people who help each other become better at software development through conversations on Slack and peer-to-peer -peer organized study groups and virtual hangouts. Today we're going to continue working on our coronavirus mapping project. A uh, request uh, went out that developers um, would create a, a project that allows the public to report when they're feeling symptoms of the coronavirus uh, and that those uh, reports can be displayed on a map. So this is a prototype project to get feedback. It's open source. The project is hosted on GitHub, github.com slash jerrylife slash coronavirus mapper. In the previous live coding stream, uh, we made quite a lot of progress. We have a full screen map. Um, we've got an API to get and put reports. We've got a form, displays a date field, and a map widget. And when you submit the report, it appears on the full screen map. Um, a few of the goals of this project uh, are to be international, so the text should be translated into different local locales, different languages. Uh, we want to be pretty simple to use, so not too many form fields, not too many pages, a uh, single page app, in the, <laughs> sort of a pure sense of the word, just that's it, everything on one page. Um, and I think, I don't know, most importantly, but very important, that the data should be easy to interpret and not, um, in particular, w with how sensitive the information is, um, it shouldn't worry people unnecessarily, as some um, visualizations are prone to do, um, when they, it makes the magnitude of the issue seem perhaps much worse or in broader geographic scope than it actually is. So to that end, we're going to, I think, start with the localization. We'll add localization tags here. Uh, then we can take a look, time permitting, at the data visualization on the map. The idea is um, this leaflet mapping library has gotten us um, quite far very quickly. Um, but working with it honestly just uncovered some uh, design decisions uh, that I didn't fully agree with and, um, and I guess in general the, um, the depth of the project the scope of the project is um, maybe not as um, thorough, or com thorough or comprehensive as um, another project called Open Layers, which I was considering starting with at the beginning. And I also think the Open Layers project seems to have more contributors and more uh, cadence, like ongoing work, although Leaflet is certainly very active as well. So this isn't really to say Leaflet is bad. Uh, Open layers is better. It's just saying, I believe open layers is a better fit for this project, in particular because we want to start looking at some clustering. When I mentioned the data should be uh, easy to interpret, um, if a lot of reports start to come in on this platform, there will be a lot of these pins, and we'll need a way of grouping them and clustering them together. Now, there's a clustering plugin for Leaflet. However, open layers also has the capability to cluster and make heat maps out of the box without any extensions. I think it's fair, fairly performant as well. So with that said, we'll go ahead and dig into the localization. It's not the most exciting part of the project, but it is definitely what's going to make it useful to people. So Django has built-in localization. We're not using a front-end framework uh, by choice. I don't think it's necessary for most projects to use 
of finding JavaScript framework. And in particular, Django does offer quite a lot in its front end templating language, including localization and um, a lot of other features. We don't have a lot of UI text. Um, our base HTML doesn't really have any, just a bunch of imports for scripts and things like that. Our reports, our map page has a few strings, so there's not going to be a lot of text. Uh, if anyone's interested in contributing to this project, translation is one of the easier ways to get involved with software projects. If perhaps you know you haven't worked with code or Python or JavaScript but you speak a language um, and you speak two languages basically one that the application is already supporting and another that it isn't or at least if it's already supporting one but could be improved you can also help improve the existing translations we only have two all right we, we have a title two field labels and two buttons and we might localize the um, the attribution text. And there's some low-hanging fruit we'll try to get too along the way too. Uh, cleaning up the JavaScript a little bit, um, providing configuration to the JavaScript through the DOM. I don't want to use Django template language inside of the JavaScript. I'd like to be able to pull the JavaScript out in its own file standalone and just use JavaScript to sprinkle on interactivity, not to take over the whole front end. I think that's a um, unfortunate trend and unnecessary for many projects. And essentially, one little optimization is that we don't really need to render this modal map until that modal is shown. And what had happened uh, in the previous um, development session is I have kind of rendering, two maps rendering. I've got the base map and a location map rendering. Uh, when the page first loads, and really we only need the base map, so I can move this rendering code into the um, into its own function probably, and then call that function inside of this report model. That'll make the code easier to understand, more abstracted, encapsulating logic into functions and things like that. We don't have a lot of JavaScript, but as it grows, we'll want to keep an eye to how to keep things organized. in doing things like uh, making Ajax calls, et cetera, in, in encapsulated functions. So you can see the the signal f for the noise of the forest for the trees. You can see the contour of the forest and then without having to get all the detail of the individual trees. But then when you want to see the individual tree, you can go to that and look inside that function call, see how it's working and refactor it or uh, fix bugs, things like that. So most of our Localization uh, text is in the DOM, but there are a few strings that we can localize. Hmm. In, well, in JavaScript at least. Like I said, I don't want to mix um, JavaScript in the Django template syntax, so I might just leave those out. So let's start with the DOM. Now to add localization to template strings, we use this trans template tag. One of the advantages of using a, a framework like Django or Ruby on Rails or Laravel or um, what's the one for, for Java, uh, like the Play framework or something, they've got uh, batteries included. You don't have to start everything from scratch or figure out which parts you're going to put together in a com kind of a cobbled framework. Uh, so you just kind of refer to the documentation that's going to tell you how to do it. So Django has localization baked in, a lot of other things baked in. So it looks like we just look for any um, template text and wrap it 
translation tags. on to string. I think we'll need to specify which language is the default. And somehow we'll need to tell Django to generate localizations for other languages, localization files for other languages. And we can upload those to the uh, localization site or people can contribute to those directly on GitHub. Let's check it out real quick. One thing I need to do is make sure I loaded the localization tags in. I think it's just load i18 in. Right there. Toward the top of our template. Otherwise, it's not able to find these trans tags, and then the syntax is basically broken. Now that we've imported these i18 in tags, I should be able to refresh and get a result. So now we have template text as expected. Just copy and paste those. <laughs> Try not to touch my face as hard. I've been inside most of the day now, though. I've washed my hands thoroughly, so I'm just gonna deal with it. I'm not very, I'm not symptomatic at this point. I'm probably more worried about touching my face in public. All right, so we've got a, a label there, and an input, and a label, and an input. and submit. That, I think we've got the UI text localized. It's not a lot to localize. 
and we want to kind of keep it that way. This has to be fairly simple and not very many moving parts. It's a prototype. We're trying to get feedback. Uh, but the main uh, request is f uh, for this to be used in Finland. Perhaps this will be used in Finland. There's no, no guarantee of that. But we have to have sh something to show so that people can give us feedback. All right, so I haven't added localizations to a Django app before. How do we do this? How do we generate? Hmm. I've got JavaScript localization, internationalization, and support. Come back to this, but yeah, that's really nice. So the next step would be how do I generate? Ah, I do have some. error messages that come back from the API. Hmm. But those are, I don't generate those, those are automatically generated. All right. So we'll check our locale middleware, make sure locale middleware is enabled. Default language code is English.
come after session middleware and before common middleware because common middleware needs activated language to resolve the requested URL. Oh, okay. It's right between those two. I see. If you use cache middleware, put locale middleware after it. We are not using cache middleware, but that's interesting. You can even localize the localization names. That's pretty cool. So people see the name of their country and then <laughs> their native the way they're familiar with it. Pretty cool. All right, I've got a little bit of bunch of green tea. So I'm still not exactly sure how to like kick this off. How do I say, well, these are my languages, generate my, my PO files. Do you, how the heck does that work? I skipped something, I scrolled really fast. There's a lot of documentation here on this localization page. What does a PO file look like? So let me just see if there's a quick answer to this. Django. Sure, it has like a scaffolding thing for this. Ah, I did open the messaging files. All right, so a message file is a plain text file representing a, a single language that contains all the available translation strings. Uh -huh. And they should be represented by in the given language. Most files have a PO extension. Hmm. But how do I make that? How do I generate that? All right, it doesn't do it. Did you try a path? Yeah, Python, manage pi, make messages, minus a. I knew it would be something like that. I could have done this to see what's available here. Session static, just rest, Django, make messages. There it is. Very cool. A lot of good stuff here. I've never used. Did it generate schema? And uh, so make messages. Um, let's see if can't find X git text. Make sure GNU git text tools or newer installed. Okay. I wonder if that's a system dependency or if it's something. Xkitex sounds like a system dependency. All right, so we're adding new development uh, requirement. I try. I don't. We're trying to keep the development environment really simple so that people can just spin up the code and not worry about it. But we're already adding postgis because we're dealing with geospatial data, and now we're adding uh, Xkitex because we're dealing with internationalization. So I think I just have to add this to the README. Yep. After brew. Okay. Well, we have the README for this reason.
Oh yeah, it's Ubuntu. Not just any Linux, but Ubuntu Linux. Okay, so we got a little bit of help setting up the environment. Ho hopefully it'll be pretty simple. Uh, we'll try to get everything, we'll maybe even get text. Could be all wrapped into a Docker container, so all you gotta do is run Docker Compose Hub. Mm, but I think that'll even present its own challenges. So yeah, there's always gonna be some kind of hurdle people have to jump through getting an environment set up. And that's been one of the biggest kind of factors influencing whether or not, like the success or failure of new contributors is just how difficult it is to get started. If it's, <laughs> uh, even small things can uh, feel insurmountable when you've never when you've never done them before. So yeah, it's hard to tell. But we just generally try to make these projects as accessible as possible. So if anyone's familiar with Docker and would like to help contribute to this project, we could I could use some help. I don't know much about Docker, but wrapping everything up, PostGIS, Django, maybe get text into a nice Docker compose up command and then getting uh, some instructions on how to spin it up and how to edit the files and have it auto refresh and stuff. I think that's all possible. All right, so we've got the inst uh, instructions there. I'll actually install it now in my computer with this command. Excellent. Welcome, chat. Let me know if you got any questions or comments about the project. This is a participatory channel. It's uh, not really just for me to be here coding. So if you got, if you'd like to steer the project in any particular ways, add, suggest some features, or get involved, let me know. We're open source and uh, welcome uh, any new contributors. All right, cool. So now let's see if this make messages command works. Hmm. I'm able to locate a path to store the translation file. Yeah. There shouldn't be any translations in that file, but yeah, there's probably a setting I'm missing. Not reading the doc, so I should have updated that one. We have a locale paths setting it. Nope. Hmm. 
sometimes an example goes a lot further than comprehensive docs. Hence, Stack Overflow is so successful. Now it should be able to figure out a place to put them. All right. Did I do it? Did I do it? Anything? Hmm. Okay, so did it for the main uh, sort of settings app, but it didn't do it for the app. <clears throat> the reports app. I think there's a setting to tell it to to localize apps. This is the part I didn't read. <laughs> so it comes with Django admin, make messages, or Python manage Py, make messages. Uh, there's locale. Let's try Finland, Finland, Finnish. Wow, it does everything in one file, okay. Hmm. I suppose that's okay, I don't see why not, but um, for some reason I think it might be good to have those locales with the app. This is nice. It even shows you what file and line. That's really cool. All right. I'm not, well, I suppose I could try my hand at localizing these, but uh, 
really, I'm just gonna test it out. English to finish. Actually, the profile is here. Now I've got one uh, string. There was a guide to adding a selector, but maybe if I hmm. well, if I refresh the page, let's see what happens. Uh, we're not running service network. Browser language isn't um, isn't swarmy. There might be a plugin for this. There was a loop. Let me read the second half of this and restart the server. What does that do? Hmm. So after you've edited a localization file, I guess you have to compile it. switch my browser language. Maybe in Chrome Dev Tools there's a way. There, okay. So good, it respects the browser language.
don't know if these are natural. Phrase. Oh, crud. No, oh, that was right. This one's. Title. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Jeez. All right. Just let me select the text. Yeah, so now if I refresh. Changes don't take effect. We'll compile the messages, run the server. Nice. <laughs> All right. I wonder where these localizations came from. The browser or some bootstrap? That's kind of strange. But anyway, all right, I'll take it. Uh, so what did we do here? file doesn't get checked in. Hmm. Part of the Django docs, though. All right, so it looks like when we deploy, we'll have to generate these mo files. Hmm. All right, well, I think that's pretty good for the localization part. Let's go ahead and do something a little bit more entertaining. <laughs> Work with a little bit of JavaScript, the mapping library. Either We'll continue to use Leaflet and just install a clustering plugin and configure it and call it good. Or I'm going to switch to open layers, refactor the JavaScript in either case. Um, there's different changes that could be made in both cases. And then use the inbuilt clustering or heat map from open layers. I'm really leaning towards open layers. I think it's a really good library. So we'll go ahead and give it a try.
required. Eventually, I'll switch over to static um, hosting. Now, one thing about open layers is it being more batteries included, more of a framework than Leaflet, for example. Uh, it's going to have a bigger file size. So I certainly don't want both of them in the project. Let's just take a quick look. If I look at the JavaScript side by side. Leaflet's around. It's cached, I guess. 139K. Oh. Yes, 600k, so quite big, quite a lot. But still, it's like a, a small JPEG. So there's probably going to be more than 600k of data coming to the client from the server. I don't know exactly. We got moment is 329k. Yes, yeah, so we're getting a little bit heavy here. Flat picker, 47k is really nice. But I think we'll be okay. Now let's go to the demo page. We're getting started. <laughs> with um, there was some struggle with Leaflet to get it to render properly and it's not the fault of Le Leaflet by any means and I'm expecting a similar struggle with open layers just to get things to fit well I'm prepared for a little bit of frustration all right, so we've already got our style on the map container. We want it to be basically full page, so that's not going to change, hopefully. We've got our scripts included. We've got our thing. We just need a div for the map container, which what I will do I don't want to lose this code, so I'm going to comment it out. I'll start with just the main page. This map container. I'll add comments around it. There we are. So that way we won't lose it. So what we're going to do here is comment out it's a little bit threaded through here these are all relating to the report form. A little bit more compact code, I suppose. 
uh, you can probably define similar to code with uh, leaflet, but I don't know how much about the nuances. Yeah, I suppose I could define the open layer layer outside of this and just refer to it here. Open source, open stream map layer. about it. I like the open layers code style. And now we're gonna create a view and we'll center it um, just on zero zero I suppose. They're almost oh I see the namespace is lowercase the Class is capital. Yeah. They're using lawn lat. We'll have to keep this in mind. That was one of the parts of uh, where we struggled with last uh, Sunday or whatever it was. But the data <laughs> coming in different lat long long lat combinations x y y x. It's confusing. Explicit is better than implicit. So we know we know lawn lat. Now I think this is slightly more conventional. It's not better by any objective definition. But I think it, there's more tools that use lawn lat than lat lawn. Maybe, I don't know. All right, so let's just see. Let's just see if our map renders. Should be it. Nada. All right, so we do need to check that out. Let's see what's going on. Damn. I thought there would be con issues, and that's good. that's good enough. See if that's something I typed. Or... Yep, definitely. Well, dang. Yes, it worked. Man, I like it. Yes, I just like it. It's really nice. Cool. So the next thing is to get a few points on the map inside this loop, and then we'll clean up. I'll repeat that for the modal. Point open layers. Welcome, chat. Have you worked with any mapping technology done in GIS work? Let me know your experience if you've got any suggestions about cool tools. Well, how do we just add a point now? get into is these cluster features. Maybe I can just start there. 
either clustering or the heat map. And it might be nice to have a toggle. Here's a heat map right here. <laughs> Let's just go straight to the fun stuff. Mm. So this was a cool thing. I just, it seems obvious in hindsight, but I didn't think of it. <laughs> sort of, you know, attaching your data and your configuration variables to the DOM and then pulling those in JavaScript uh, so your JavaScript can live separately and can do its imperative stuff over here and you're declarative about your configuration. The cool thing about this is then the configuration can be stored in Django, for example, in the database and can be passed into each instance of the app. So you could have default locale or default clustering distance, things like that. So we've got inside of our map, we're going to put a little form there. No, no right next to our map. Hmm. We probably don't need that. Let me see. All right, so we, we set up, uh, we gotta get our features though. Okay, so for each of those, we're iterating over these. For each of these, we're just gonna create a new feature. And I think we can just grab these coordinates straight out of the database without having to swap them around. That was a, such a frustrating experience. And I'm wondering if I, see, we don't have low dash. We can use map. JavaScript has a map though. What version? ES6? Can I use? Cool thing about map is it will just save us a little bit of a uh, jumping around. That is a huge example, dang. Oh, that's a polyfill. <laughs> wow. All right. Yep. So the map will return the output of the function inside of it being applied to each of the items in the array. So essentially, yeah, wait. Hmm. Yeah, we want to apply it to this this array. Oh, no, these features array. And created a feature. Yeah. Map. Nice. Return report geometry. Coordinates. Wow. Boing. And we want to. <clears throat> well, we've got a reports available here. Report coordinates. Ah, singular thing. Now we're getting into naming things. Problems. Always a problem. Mm. Create the return the feature here. <laughs> That's not too bad. Mm -hmm. Oh boy. So 
something like that. Not too bad. Aye. Then we want to make a feature. Return that. Should work. And then we'll just say report features. It's lose track of it for now while I'm refactoring. So we'll get a point for each report and then convert it to a feature, return those features still in the success function. With those features we want to create a vector source. I can't just use this. Uh, I'm not using this import, so I have to slow down a little bit. So, a vector source is from a well dot layer. Well dot source dot vector source features from ol. Unfortunately, we don't have our IntelliSense here, so I have to guess. Let's just see if we get some errors that'll be a good start. Hmm. Oh, right. Well, actually, that's good. Didn't get. So I actually need to call it and pass in. Features.
Let me just try without the style definitions. That's quite a lot of code. the layer So if I get a get a reference to map, so yeah, clearly a lot more uh, code to get a basic thing with um, open layers. But granted, we're doing clustering and some other stuff, so actually it might not be too too much more than with leaflets. Let's see if it works. I don't know. Yeah. Ah, blasted. Hmm, I wonder if there's a closure in there also. There's a collision there, I got it. Well, we shouldn't have to worry about that. Get our zoom not so high. Where's a one? I think it'll lower. Whoa, not 400. Aha, we got some, <laughs> some clustering. Did it cluster everything?
Let's try just adding this vector source first. I should just try to refactor it as it was. Okay, so you create a source and then you create a layer. <laughs> Some hoops to jump through. That doesn't keep these names a little bit weird for now. Huh. Certainly, there's always a little bit of fiddling around and learning. Well, those are good. So we're at the points. I'm doing a good start. Let's, let's see if I can just get a base. Uh, I'd like them to be interactive. This is working. So we're going to create a bunch of, there's some styles there. I'll leave that alone right now. Vector source with all of our features. Then we create a vector layer. With the source. And style it. Hmm. Yeah, they definitely have different. Different coordinates. Styling right now. This heat map is a pretty interesting one. Oh, I let you. Secondary variable. Come back to it. I think we'll have a toggle, probably, at some point. But I'm just going to focus on one one type of map at first. And I, I can't even get this uh, 
This creature is surrendered properly. So that's a little bit concerning. Simple enough, but I need to put some data on it. Hmm. Oh, what happened here? There we go. All right, so we got a layer. Source, I guess, would be here nested in that layer. Hmm. We might need to project those. projections So the data were unprojected. They were in different projections, that is. We're one and a half hours. I think this is going to be a pretty good stopping point. Um, I kind of want the, This is good because it doesn't like pinpoint the data to someone's house, hopefully. Although, yeah, it seems like it's pretty abstract. Uh, let's go ahead and... Ooh, yes, we need to add our button back in just a moment. But let's go ahead and uh, commit what we've got. I can't fully clean the um, leaflet code until um, we swap out the, the marker, the uh, the map inside of the modal. And that's going to take some more fiddling around. So I'll put that off for another day. I think we've gotten good progress. I'll let the lessons for today sink in about how to use the uh, open layers APIs and we'll see what we can do with it tomorrow overall though I, I do like how this open layers is organized it's pretty well namespaced and um, the stuff makes sense that you're doing you have a few a little bit more ceremony but I think it's for good reason I'm pretty good at coming from a background with like GIS tools like QGIS and whatnot. These, you know, projections, they're important. You can't always assume it's the data are in the same projection. Um, 
there was less fiddling with the coordinate system in, the, in this case now, but having to swap them, swap the X and Y coordinates. So that's a nice relief. I don't think the code is. Uh, I think we had too many label, too many uh, lines of code here. So I will get the modal fixed. I'll do that in today's session. And we'll work on clustering or heat map. I don't know which. Well, maybe both. Um, tomorrow. I'll just say open later. So again, our, this project is on GitHub, github.com slash jerrylife slash coronavirus mapper. Do feel free to check it out. Um, mess with the code if, if you want to make an improvement, open a pull request. If you have questions, if it's difficult to get a uh, development environment set up, let me know. I'll gladly improve the documentation. All right, so then, oh, I do see it, a little bit of a gap. Oh, that's because we're zoomed so far up, but the map is still full screen. So let's see if we can add a control, a button to the open layers canvas. If not, we might have to just go back to having the uh, bootstrap nav bar, navigation bar might work, in fact. Let me just paste that in and see. It might be nice not to have it though. Oh, just give me some of the copy and paste. We'll put this in our base HTML right above the map div. Or right above the content block, I should say. It's a big paste, but should be good in two times. Hmm, I guess that's correct. Anyway, yeah. All right. So basically, what happens? Does it shift the whole? Yeah, it shifts the whole thing down. That's the same thing we were getting with um, with leaflet. So I just have to figure out <coughs> how to render a bootstrap. Your navigation bar, which could be useful here. We, it's a single page app, but you might have a language chooser, for example. Hmm. I just need to run it here. Somebody's had this problem before. Minus navbar height, exactly. Seven years ago, though. <laughs> Absolute positioning. There's got to be a way. 2018, a little bit more recent. It's probably a really simple way. No, not a JavaScripty way. Mm, come on, just come here. Height 100. This is basically what I'm after. Oof. <laughs> this might work. So we put everything in a container, full height, flex container, single column, I guess. Put our nav bar in there, right? And then flex fill the rest of it. What? This is pretty nice. I, seems like it should ship with something like that. But all right. oh yeah, it's gonna be there. Flex grow. Sure, not your biodiesel. 
using some hip strips and so we put everything in this container fluid. Let's give it a try. Indent everything one level. So we've got a nav bar with a bunch of stuff we don't need. this around the content area. But inside of the same containers in that bar. Let's give it a try. See how badly I got it. I guess the nav bar doesn't have that for a row. Well, it's not that big a deal. It's going to be possible. I don't want to fight with it. I'm not totally sure we need a nav bar. In particular. Particular, if I can add buttons here. You know, I didn't really try it exactly. this button it'd be really nice if I could actually just do it in, in markup and in, inside the map element
wanted to. Now this was a lot easier on leaflet, just to add a button. This is actually why the the nav bar might be useful. Hey, what's up, Scribbles? Welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thanks. <laughs> I'm trying to get a button back on there so people can add their reports. Need a little bit of tea, helping me think. So, what's the way to flow around this problem? I'd rather not do it in JavaScript because I want to keep the text localized. I just added localization strings. That's, yeah, the bootstrap nav bar. When I put the nav, strip, <clears throat> nav bar in there, watch what happens. Uh, righty then, let's go back. Let's try it with the bootstrap nav bar. Yeah, we can do it. Uh, I just had the recipe and I close it. Essentially, if I paste a blue bootstrap nav bar in there, it pushes everything down. If you remember that, I think you were here when that was happening. The overflow issue, exactly, yeah. And I, so I just want to figure out a very simple way, nothing too convoluted, no you know, complicated styles, no JavaScript. Uh, there's got to be a way to just use the correct um, sort of bootstrap classes, I think. I'm pretty close to it. So yeah, you remember the overflow issue though. This, this nav bar has a lot in there. Is there a simpler one? Just an image. Let's go with that for just a minute. Yeah, if I get this nav bar back in there, I think we'll be in good shape. I'll put in a couple buttons on there that are easy to use. I could put it on the top or bottom, doesn't matter. Would a grid not solve this? I think it I think it would. We can look at the layout in just a minute. But yeah, let's just demo it. Ready? Boeing. So yeah, you can just see the same thing with the, when the button was like up there. In fact, uh, it just pushes it down there. And I don't even have a. Oh uh, yeah, there's no uh, image because I don't have that image loaded. But uh, let's do this. Uh, just the branding instead of the image. Coronavirus, coronavirus case tracker, CCT. Huh. Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> It's not going to link to anywhere, but there will be a button. There will be a button to submit your report. Or what was the problematic when the map was wrapped in a div? Or was that problematic? 
No. Um, actually, yeah, it was. It, like, the map didn't display. I just refactored the code, or not didn't refactor, I replaced the map with open layers, but I didn't change the CSS. I think that's, just as soon as I added div around the map, yeah, it does, doesn't display because my CSS selectors are very specific. Where are they? On map HTML. Mm. But maybe if I do this. Yeah, then. So, still doesn't work anyway. The uh, still pushes it down. So, yeah. Stack of flow. How to stack layers of div using Bootstrap? Let's give it a try. And I think I also might have found another answer. just using a proper grid what about can we use the new fancy mm, what is it called well let's do let's do it proper let's do it bootstrap three style all right so actually what am i doing here reverting uh but then and why can't i just do this you know maybe that will just be all i need right so it'll fill whatever container it's in. Oh, jeez. And let me just revert this back. Boing, boing. All right, so you need like everything to be specified here. Then it works, but it's offset. But we're gonna try this grid approach here. Now, do you put the nav bar in the grid? This is from 2016. I don't want to define my own CSS though, right? So there's got to be just a plain old bootstrap way. None of that either.
Flexbox. This is the one. All right, let's just be very careful here. Check this one out. Let me know if you what you spot here. Can you hide this JavaScript thing? Can you turn that off? Minus, minimize it. They've defined a class here. Minimum. Oh yeah. BP. Whoops. Let me check that one out. Yeah, that looks good. I like the one that you sent. But wait, ah, uh, but you gotta have this. Do you? And it's got a lot of CSS here. Makes it hard to see. But basically, what do they do here? They put a nav bar in. Can I just do this, container fluid? If I put the nav bar fixed top. Ah, now I'm mixing up so much. Then I put the uh, Content in a container fluid. So I'm after something just like along these lines. No CSS or JavaScript necessary. Just using Bootstrap semantics. So we got our I'll 
move these styles uh, in a minute, but let me just see if this works. Take the fixed top off. We got our flex container, flex column. Got the CSS in there. The main thing is to now check out the. Oh, come on. There. is used on the nav bar oh boy the I think that's it and then the class used on the surrounding div Uh, flex grow one should cause it to expand into the full height of the parent. And I think this is now a uh, standard class in Bootstrap. Scribbles, I don't know, man. It's one of these. Can you try these out? Just use the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. We're gonna get this to work. It's gonna work. So now it's part of Bootstrap 4.
I was just copying and pasting from. Uh, footer footer might not be bad. That's uh, it's another option. This fill flex is, I think, what well, we got to zero in on it. It's going to be something like this. I haven't read much on the flex box, so this is all new to me. Flex grow. Need a little bit of CSS here. All right, see you in a little bit. Scribbles. Yeah, I'm going. To, I'll probably be on for a little bit longer. I'll, but I'm not exactly sure. I'm getting a little bit tired. It's two hours in. So yeah, thanks for stopping by. All right, so we put our container around everything. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, that's the question. No, that's the answer. Right.
This is display flex. I believe. So we shouldn't need to define our own flex fill unless they define it as something else. Hmm. I'm using Bootstrap 4.3.1, that's a problem. Part of the problem. I don't need jQuery Slim, I needed uh, the minified jQuery, but we'll make sure we've got the popper version that they're recommending here. All right, 
So now we have the latest bootstrap release. So hopefully we'll have. Flex fill. Nice. All right. Right here. So we've got a, a container that has a nav bar, standard nav bar. Nothing funny there. And then a row with flex fill. Let's go flex column, height 100, and deflex, I think is all we need. Maybe not the container fluid part. Then we have our center nav bar. Light. Then we have a container. Oh. Then we have a row, flex grow. make it yellow so we'll even see if that's working like they did here this is a little bit frustrating why can't I just figure it out man There we go, all right.
me just see. Getting close. I mean, I, this is this is what we want right here, but. Uh, I think if I add the class here, deflex. Which it is. And if I the map to flex grow and like doing something like this in flutter I think would be trivial Pretty close.
<laughs> Takes a while. Okay. Haven't had dinner yet. I like it. Okay, so yeah, just didn't have to have any f custom CSS really. I think this is probably necessary though. Okay, you gotta specify the body height. Makes sense. And we can get rid of this leaflet stuff. Declarative styles, height and width, 100%. Uh, gotta leave these. Actually, I don't need this one. So let's fire up that modal. Um, whoops, I just deleted it, didn't I? I'm gonna put the modal back on the, uh, the uh, trigger for the modal back on nav bar this time though. Man, this was the answer. Almost. Pushed uh, Let's see if I push the change. I want to get this button, <laughs> this code, so I can copy and paste it. Here it is. I think we can just put that right here in the nav bar. Yeah, it works. All right. Those localization strings. There it is. 
All right, just have to match the correct localization of string. I don't have font awesome, but I could probably put an icon font library in there and add a little icon, uh, like a thermometer or something, or, or one of those emoji of somebody not feeling good. Put the emoji right there in the code. <gasps> no way. I don't know. Well, I don't know if it kind of cheapens it to have the emoji in there. It's basically Scribbles, if you're still around, what do you think? Does adding the emoji make this seem silly now? I'll leave it off. I mean, it's for, especially for cold and flu. Kind of makes it more meaningful. Kind of inviting. Hmm. I think it's okay. Localization string. I'm getting tired. <laughs> Two and a half hours. That's good. I haven't had dinner. This extra space over here.
I guess because of the curve of the emoji, it makes it appear further away from the edge. So just the margin left needs to be automatic and it'll push it over there.
we're good to go. So, what did we do? I kind of like the emoji now. All right, I'll get some feedback on the emoji if it's inappropriate or whatever. I mean, this is kind of serious stuff, but it's also helpful to have meaningful symbols on the screen to guide the user who might not be familiar with what we mean by add a report. What kind of report? It's like a sickness report, symptoms report. Anyway, this is prototype. Any feedback is welcome. Let's go ahead and, and, and uh, commit these changes. So. I did too much, too much in one go, but uh, emoji in its own commit so it's clear what's going on upgrade bootstrap initial working layout basically we had a local, localization here yeah Hey, welcome, Dr. Unafraid. Good seeing you again. It was the same as emoji. with medical mask is that a good one or what it's like these are tailor-made hmm oh my goodness 
even called coronavirus emoji. And the sweating. Hmm. Hmm. I don't know if I'm getting carried away now. I could very well be being carried away. Only 1080p? You know? I think that's all I'm able to broadcast. That's for like full HD though. And uh, another thing, they a lot of the providers are kind of throttling the bandwidth because so many people are working from home or they're just uh, there's not enough bandwidth to go around. Is that excessive? That's excessive, isn't it? Tell you what, though. And yeah, it's a little bit too much on the button. It's like the metaphor here is that if you're feeling coronavirus symptoms, you should be safe and considerate of your fellow, fellow persons, fellow humans, and report your symptoms. What do you think? If you're feeling sick, wear your mask and report your symptoms. That's decent. What have you been up to lately, Dr. Unafraid? Have you been working on any web development projects? Again, if we want to take the uh, emojis off, that's fine. But I seriously, you know, believe that adding little icons like this is helpful to communicate, you know, deeper meaning. Like certainly adding icons to buttons like check mark or something like that, or little exclamation sign for danger. Those are good little additions. I don't think about it too hard. All right, cool. The next steps I won't be taking tonight. I'll probably try to do a session tomorrow will be to improve the map. Uh, I want to replace this leaflet map with the open layers. Uh, so that way I can clean up one library, 100K, not too, leaflet's pretty lightweight, but yeah, just so it's consistent in both places. We'll have to figure out the click events and drag, if you want to drag and pan to add your report. Then we can go a little bit further into open layers, look at clustering, possibly a heat map, uh, maybe even generate some data, because we'll want a lot of points to test out the heat map. Uh, and there's a couple of feature requests that have come in uh, via the YouTube channel. I added them to our issue tracker here on GitHub. For example, the number of cases could be useful if instead of just submitting this form once for each case, say a doctor or nurse or some other uh, health official I think really the health officials should be the primary users here, not the general public, but maybe the general public will be nice and not use this to troll 
or spread false information and misinformation. But anyways, uh, if they would like to say, oh, we've just found or diagnosed 30 cases, you know, in this precinct, uh, they could just add, submit the form once. The cool thing about the open layers heat map is it also has like sort of a magnitude uh, value. So with the earthquake example, you have the earthquake location and magnitude. I don't know if it would sum up nearby earthquakes or what, or how it would work, but that could be an easy, easy feature to add. All right, so. Finally got the nav bar working, this is great. Another li nice little touch I think would be to add like a little button with a question mark on it saying, what's this all about? You know, and uh, some links to the source code, uh, perhaps links to official sources of information for the coronavirus uh, pandemic, such as the World Health Organization or local ministries, depending on where this might be deployed. Uh, if, you know, in Germany or Finland or, uh, you know, wherever they might want to track cases across the nation, you'd want to also be able to provide links to official sources of information. So as we start getting into those types of features, we might want to create a settings page where it could be configured per deployment. Uh, and also we want to make it as easy as possible to deploy. Uh, I spent a couple hours yesterday just spinning up one instance, tried several approaches, um, ended up sort of manually deploying it behind Nginx and manually installing PostGIS um, and then deploying Django with, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, what is that? Gunicorn, G-Unicorn. <laughs> any case, uh, it was a learning journey. If we could just spin up a Docker image, a Docker Compose, that would be super nice. So anybody Watching this, who would like to contribute, really uh, welcome contributions. Uh, this is open source. It's a community effort. We've already gotten some great feedback and suggestions. Um, if you want to add feature requests, those are welcome. If you'd like to translate it, localize it into your language. Right now, we've got it localized in two languages, English and Finnish. But if you're good with another language, that would be a welcome contribution. You could just send me the um, localization strings and I can add them to the source code. Um, what are other good ways to get involved? I think we'll be able, um, I need help with Docker, Dockerization of the app perhaps, or making it really super easy to deploy whatever the best practices are without a lot of overhead. Uh, probably not a, I don't know, I guess even a Kubernetes Helm chart, whatever, uh, but it's not that heavy of an app. I guess if it gets heavy usage, you'd want to be able to scale horizontally, so maybe a Kubernetes cluster would be a good option. CloudFormation template, I don't know. Let's start with Docker. Uh, anyways, those are just some ideas of ways to get involved if you're interested in contributing to an open source project. Uh, I really appreciate the feedback, and thanks for hanging out in the chat. Today's Scribbles is nice seeing you and Dr. Unafraid. It's good to see you around, haven't, haven't seen you in a while. I'll try to be more um, consistent with streaming. Um, Perhaps over the next weeks or months, I'll be able to stream some more open source projects. Once again, this has been a Code Buddies live coding hangout. If you're interested in open source in general or, or learning any kind of uh, programming language, um, CodeBuddies.org is a great community. The CodeBuddies.org platform is in the midst of a rewrite. The back end is being written with Django, Python, and the front end, I believe, is going to be written with React. So please stop on by the CodeBuddies.org community. Check us out on GitHub at github.com slash CodeBuddies to get involved with the open source, um, the next generation open source CodeBuddies platform. All right, well, thanks again for watching, and I hope you stay safe amidst all this um, in these times of uncertainty. See you around.